Hi everyone, it's Professor Pemberton. In this video, we're going to talk about the unit circle. So in this section, we're going to explore some of the properties of the circle of radius 1, which is centered at the origin, which is called the unit circle. These properties are used in the next section when we actually define the six basic trigonometric functions. So in this video, we're going to talk about how to determine whether a point lies on the unit circle, how to find the terminal points on the unit circle given a value of a real number, how to find the reference numbers defined by a real number, and then use the reference numbers to find the terminal points on the unit circle. So let's begin with the unit circle. The set of all points at a distance of 1 from the origin is a circle of radius 1, and it's called the unit circle, and it has an equation that's in standard form as x squared plus y squared equals 1. So recall that the standard form for the equation of a circle is x subtract h quantity squared plus y subtract k quantity squared is equal to r squared, where the center of the circle is h comma k, so our center for the unit circle is 0 comma 0, so we'll have x minus 0 all squared, which will be x squared plus y minus 0, all squared, which will be, and the right side of the equation is 1 squared, or 1, because the unit circle has radius 1. And so this is the graph of the unit circle, x squared plus y squared equals 1. You have a circle that is the equal distance from the origin, 0 comma 0, and the distance from the origin is always 1. So the definition of the unit circle, the unit circle is a circle of radius 1 centered at the origin in the xy plane or Cartesian coordinate system, and its equation is given as x squared plus y squared equals 1. So in example 1, we're going to find out, is a point actually on the unit circle or not? So determine whether the following points lie on the unit circle. So number 1, the point is given as the x-coordinate is squared 3 divided by 3, and the y-coordinate is given as squared 6 divided by 3. And so if it's on the unit circle, it must satisfy the equation x squared plus y squared equals 1. Let's find out. If x squared plus y squared equals 1, then we have the x-coordinate squared, squared 3 divided by 3 all squared, plus the y-coordinate squared, which will give you squared 6 divided by 3 quantity squared, and we're going to find out, is this equal to 1? Well, squared 3 divided by 3 all squared will give you 3 ninths, or 1 third, and squared 6 divided by 3 all squared will give you 6 ninths, or 1 third. So 2 thirds plus 1 third, or 3 ninths plus 6 ninths, is equal to 1. And so this point, squared 3 divided by 3 for the x-coordinate, and squared 6 divided by 3 for the y-coordinate, is actually a point on the unit circle. And then number two, we have a point three fourths for the x coordinate, comma negative squared seven divided by four for the y coordinate. And so again, if it's on the unit circle, it must satisfy the equation x squared plus y squared equals one. Let's find out. If the x coordinate is three fourths, then you'll have three fourths squared for the x squared, plus y squared will give you negative squared seven divided by four all squared. So make sure the negative's inside the parentheses because that's actually included with the y coordinate. And so three fourths squared will give you nine sixteenths, and negative squared 7 divided by 4 all squared will give you positive 7 sixteenths, and 9 sixteenths plus 7 sixteenths is equal to 1. It's 16 divided by 16. And so again, this point, 3 fourths for the x coordinate, and negative squared 7 divided by 4 for the y coordinate is actually a point on the unit circle. Let's do one more example before we talk about terminal points on the unit circle. So example 2, locating a point on the unit circle. Find the y coordinate for the following point that lies on the unit circle, but it's in quadrant 4. So your point is squared 3 divided by 2 for the x coordinate and the y coordinate is unknown. And so this point, if it's on the unit circle, it must still satisfy the equation x squared plus y squared equals 1. So x squared plus y squared equals 1 would give you squared 3 divided by 2 for the x coordinate, all squared, plus the y coordinate, or y squared, is equal to 1. And so squared 3 divided by 2, all squared, simplifies 3 fourths, plus y squared must equal 1. Well now we have an equation where we can actually find out what is the y coordinate possibilities to actually have this point be on the unit circle. So y squared is equal to 1 subtract 3 fourths after you collect like terms. And then if you square root both sides of the equation to get y by itself, you'll have square root of y squared is equal to, make sure you have the plus or minus whenever you take an even root on both sides of the equation to cancel out an even power. And so you have plus or minus square root of 1 fourth, which will simplify the left side of the equation will be y is equal to plus or minus, and the right side becomes 1 half, because that's the square root of 1 fourth. And so there are two different possibilities. You have the y coordinate is either positive 1 half, or the y coordinate could be negative 1 half. However, if the point is in quadrant 4, the x-coordinate is positive, but the y-coordinate is negative. So the y-coordinate must be negative 1 half for this point to be on the unit circle and also in quadrant 4. Now let's talk about terminal points on the unit circle. Suppose that you have a number t, that's a real number, and the t is greater than or equal to 0. We're going to mark off a distance t along the unit circle starting at the point 1 comma 0 and we're going to move in the counterclockwise direction. So let's say we start off with this point 1 comma 0 that's on the unit circle and we trace off a distance t going counterclockwise along the unit circle. That's what's called the positive direction or positive orientation of the unit circle. Well, if you trace this out a distance of t along the unit circle, that's going to be a point on the unit circle, and this point is going to be denoted as p, which is x comma y. And this is what's called a terminal point that's defined by the value of t. 
On the other hand, if the value of t is negative, we're going to start off at the point 1, 0, but this time we're going to mark off a distance of the absolute value of t, so the distance is always a positive number, but this time we'll go in the clockwise direction or the negative orientation or negative direction along the unit circle. So in this way, we're actually going to arrive at a point p, xy on the unit circle, but this time if you start off at 1, 0 and you have a value of t that's negative, you actually go clockwise along the unit circle. And so you'll have another point, p, xy, where this terminal point is defined by this value of t, but you actually go clockwise because t is a negative value. Since the circumference of the unit circle is 2 pi, because the radius of the unit circle is 1, and the circumference is 2 pi times radius, you have 2 pi times 1, or 2 pi. So the circumference of the unit circle is 2 pi. We actually can move counterclockwise all the way around the circle from 1, 0, and then return to 1, 0 if we go a distance of 2 pi. Well, if the point travels halfway across the circle, or around the unit circle, it actually has traveled a distance of pi, because that's half of 2 pi. So if we move a quarter of the distance around the unit circle, then actually we'll travel pi divided by 2, or 2 pi divided by 4, which will simplify to pi over 2. So let's say we start off at 1, 0, and we trace out a distance counterclockwise, the positive direction. If t is positive pi over 2, we go a pi over 2. That would be one quarter of the way around the entire circle. We have this terminal point, which is on the y-axis, at the point 0, 1. So a one quarter revolution counterclockwise, the positive orientation or positive direction, the t is pi over 2, is determining the point, the terminal point, 0, 1. Let's say t is equal to pi. If t is equal to pi, we go counterclockwise, a distance of pi. Well, then we're also a half turn around the unit circle because the unit circle circumference is 2 pi. So we have this terminal point at negative 1, 0. So if you have a one half rotation counterclockwise, if t is equal to pi, the terminal point is negative 1, 0, and that point is on the x axis. Okay, again, let's start off at 1, 0, and let's say t is equal to positive 3 pi divided by 2. Well, 3 pi divided by 2 is 3 quarters of 2 pi, or 3 quarters of an entire revolution or rotation of the unit circle. So we trace out counterclockwise 3 quarters of a rotation around the unit circle, and we end up with this terminal point at 0, 1 on the y-axis. And so a 3 quarters rotation counterclockwise will give you t is equal to 3 pi over 2, and the terminal point is 0, 1. And let's say t is equal to 2 pi. If t is equal to 2 pi, we start off at 1, 0, and we make one complete revolution or rotation of the unit circle counterclockwise. And we return to this point, 1, 0. So the terminal point is 1, 0 if t is equal to 2 pi. So in example 3, we're going to find terminal points. Find the terminal point on the unit circle determined by each of the following real numbers t. So number 1, let's say t is equal to 3 pi. So this is a distance around the unit circle 3 pi units counterclockwise because the value of t is positive. We're going to find out what is that terminal point. So if we start at the point 1, 0, and we trace around the unit circle one time, that would be 2 pi. Well, it means we have to go around the unit circle one time, but then another distance of pi after 2 pi to get to 3 pi for value of t. So we end up at this point on the x-axis where the terminal point is negative 1, 0. So if t is equal to 3 pi, we trace out the unit circle counterclockwise a distance of 3 pi, and we'll end up at this point, negative 1, 0. And that's the terminal point determined by t equals 3 pi. Number 2, t is equal to negative pi. So since t is a negative value this time, we are going in the clockwise direction, starting at the point 1, 0. So if we start at 1, 0, and we go clockwise a distance of pi, then we would end up on the x-axis at the point negative 1, 0. And so that is the terminal point for the value of t equals negative pi. Number 3, Let's say t is equal to negative pi divided by 2. Well, we know that pi divided by 2 is one quarter revolution of the unit circle. But if the t value is negative, that means we're going to go a quarter rotation, but we're going to go in the clockwise direction, starting at the point 1, 0. So if you start at 1, 0 and you go a quarter of a turn or quarter of a rotation, you'll end up on the y-axis, which is the point 0, comma, negative 1 on the unit circle. And so this is the terminal point whenever t is equal to negative pi over 2. The terminal point would be p is 0, negative 1. And then number 4, let's say t is equal to positive 5 pi divided by 2. So 5 pi divided by 2 is actually pi divided by 2 past 2 pi. Because 2 pi is 4 pi divided by 2, this is pi divided by 2 distance beyond one revolution of the unit circle, which is 2 pi. So if you start up at 1, 0, and the value of t is positive, you go counterclockwise around the unit circle, 2 pi, would be one rotation, but then you have to go another pi divided by 2 to get to 5 pi over 2. 
And so notice that you end up on the y-axis on the unit circle, so the terminal point is 0, 1. Well, now that we know how to find the terminal points on a unit circle for the values of t equals pi over 2, t equals pi, t equals 3 pi over 2, and t equals 2 pi, now let's talk about other special angles that are formed from the values of t. So let's say we have a terminal point p, which is x comma y, determined by the real number pi divided by 4. So this is our t value. We're going to start at 1 comma 0 and go a distance of pi over 4 in the counterclockwise direction. Well, notice that pi over 4 is exactly halfway between 0 and pi over 2. So if you go one quarter of a revolution, that would be pi over 2 for the value of t. Well, pi over 4 is half of pi over 2. So you're going half of a revolution between 0 and pi over 2. So notice that this point must be on the unit circle. You can actually form a right triangle where the hypotenuse is actually the distance from the origin to this point p because that's the radius of the unit circle. And we're going to call the horizontal distance from the origin to the point x. So if this distance is x on the horizontal axis forming your right triangle, the vertical distance from the x-axis will also be a distance of x because the angle is pi divided by 4 or 45 degrees. So now notice what you have. You actually have a 45, 45, 90 degree triangle. That means we can actually find out what the x value is by using the Pythagorean theorem because now we have a right triangle. So the Pythagorean theorem is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Well, the length of one side squared would be x squared plus the other length of the side squared would be another x squared and it equals the hypotenuse length squared. So x squared plus x squared will equal one squared or one. And so the left side of the equation gives you 2x squared, the right side of the equation is 1, and now if you solve for x, you can actually find this unknown distance for the x-coordinate. So x squared will equal 1 half after you divide both sides of the equation by 2. You take the square root on both sides to cancel out the square power, and so you have x is equal to plus or minus square root of 1 half, which can be simplified as this. You'll have x equals plus or minus, square root of the numerator is square root of 1, that's 1, and the square root of 2 will be in the denominator. And so now you can rationalize the denominator by multiplying the top and the bottom of the fraction by square root of 2. And so plus or minus 1 divided by square root 2 is equal to plus or minus square root 2 divided by square root 2 times square root 2, which is just 2. And since this terminal point is in the first quadrant, we know that the x value will be positive. So the x value is positive square root 2 divided by 2 for the x coordinate for the terminal points. However, we know that the y coordinate will also be the same distance. So the y coordinate will also be square root 2 divided by 2. And so this is how you find out the terminal point for the value of t equals pi over 4, which has the coordinates square root 2 divided by 2 for the x coordinate and also square root 2 divided by 2 for the y coordinate. So there's also a similar method that can be used to find the terminal points determined by t equals pi divided by 6 and also t is equal to pi divided by 3. Therefore, you actually have terminal points for very special values of t all located in quadrant 1 as follows. If t is equal to 0, that means the distance from the point 1 comma 0 is a distance of 0. So you're at the point 1 comma 0 when t equals 0. If t is equal to pi over 6, you actually find out that the terminal point is the x coordinate square root 3 divided by 2 and the y coordinate is 1 half using a similar method using a 30, 60, 90 triangle. If t is equal to pi over 4, we just found out that the x coordinate is square root 2 divided by 2 and also the y coordinate is square root 2 divided by 2. If t is equal to pi over 3, you go a distance of pi over 3 along the unit circle counterclockwise and you'll find out that the terminal point will be 1 half of the x coordinate and the y coordinate is square root 3 divided by 2. Again, because of the 30, 60, 90 special triangle. And then if t is equal to pi over 2, we talked about this earlier, if you go pi over 2, that would be one quarter of a revolution counterclockwise, you end up at the terminal point 0, 1. And so it's very important to remember these terminal points for the values of t equals 0, t equals pi over 6, t equals pi over 4, t equals pi over 3, and also t equals pi over 2. Because these values of t all exist in the first quadrant and they're determined by special triangles. 45, 45, 90 triangle or a 30, 60, 90 triangle. So in the next section, we're going to define the six trigonometric functions in terms of the terminal points located on the unit circle determined by the real number t. So if you know the value of t, you will know the terminal points on the unit circle and actually that will help you find out what is the value of the six basic trigonometric functions. So that's why it's very important that you know these terminal points for these very special angles in the first quadrant. So example four, we're going to find more terminal points. Find the terminal point determined by each of the following given real numbers t. So number one, if t is equal to negative pi divided by four. So if t is a negative value, we're actually going to start at the point one comma zero and travel clockwise along the unit circle, a distance of pi over four. 
So if you start at the point 1 comma 0 and you go a distance of pi over 4, but this time clockwise, you'll actually end up in the fourth quadrant, and this is actually describing an angle of 45 degrees, or pi over 4. So the terminal point will have the same x-coordinate as the 45 degree or pi over 4 angle in the first quadrant. You'll have square root 2 divided by 2 for the x-coordinate, but the y-coordinate will be negative because you're in the fourth quadrant. The y-coordinate will be negative square root 2 divided by 2. So the terminal point determined by the value t equals negative pi over 4, square root 2 divided by 2 for the x-coordinate, but negative square root 2 divided by 2 for the y-coordinate. Number 2, let's say the value for t is 7 pi divided by 4. So this time the value for t is positive. Remember that a distance around the unit circle, one revolution is 2 pi. That would be 8 pi over 4 if we went one entire revolution or one rotation of the unit circle. So if you start at the point 1 comma 0 and you go counterclockwise, a distance of 7 pi over 4, you'll end up in the fourth quadrant again, or quadrant 4. And so again, we'll have a terminal point determined by a 45 degree angle or pi over 4 angle for the right triangle. And so the terminal point will be square root 2 over 2 for the x coordinate. And the y coordinate again will be negative square root 2 over 2. So the terminal point determined by the value of t equals 7 pi over 4 is square root 2 divided by 2 for the x coordinate and negative square root 2 divided by 2 for the y coordinate. Number three. Let's say t is equal to negative 5 pi divided by 6. So this time, notice that we're going to go clockwise around the unit circle because the value for t is negative. So we start at 1 comma 0 and we go a distance of 5 pi over 6. We'll actually be in quadrant 3. And the angle that's formed will be from a pi over 6 angle or a 30 degree angle. And so we'll have a 30, 60, 90 degree triangle. Well, this terminal point will have an x coordinate that's negative because you're in quadrant 3. The x coordinate will be negative square root 3 over 2, and the y coordinate will also be negative because you're in quadrant 3, and the y coordinate is negative 1 half. So the terminal point for the value t equals negative 5 pi over 6 is the point negative square root 3 over 2 for the x coordinate, and the y coordinate is negative 1 half. Number 4, let's say the value for t is 5 pi divided by 3. So again, this is a positive value for t. We're going to start at the point 1 comma 0 and go counterclockwise along the unit circle, a distance of 5 pi over 3. However, notice that 5 pi over 3 is pi divided by 3 short of one revolution or one rotation of the unit circle counterclockwise. So if we start at the point 1 comma 0, we go a distance of 5 pi over 3 counterclockwise. We'll end up in quadrant 4, and this will form a right triangle where the angle is pi divided by 3, or 60 degrees. And so you'll have this terminal point, which is determined by the x coordinate is 1 half, and the y coordinate will be negative square root 3 over 2 because you're in quadrant 4. The x coordinate is positive and the y coordinate is negative. So the terminal point for the value t equals 5 pi over 3 is 1 half for the x coordinate and negative square root 3 over 2 for the y coordinate. So now that we know terminal points on the unit circle, let's talk about reference numbers. We have seen that if you want to find a terminal point in any quadrant, we need to only know the corresponding terminal point in the first quadrant. So if you know the terminal points in the first quadrant, it's just going to be a different change of sign in the x-coordinate or the y-coordinate depending on the value for t. Hence, we can use the idea of a reference angle to help us find the terminal points. So the definition for a reference number, let t be a real number. The reference number is denoted as a t-bar, a bar over top the t. It's associated with a t that is the shortest distance along the unit circle between the terminal point, determined by the value for t, and the x-axis. So the following figure shows that if you want to find the reference number t bar, it's helpful to know the quadrant in which the terminal point lies that's determined by the value for t. So notice, if the terminal point lies in quadrants 1 or 4, the x-coordinate will be positive, and that means that t bar, the reference number, is moving along the unit circle to the positive x-axis. So if you're in quadrant 1, notice that the shortest distance to the x-axis is actually the value for t. So t bar is equal to t if you're in quadrant 1. And if you're in quadrant 4, the distance to the x-axis will actually be the difference from 2 pi subtract the value for t. So if you're going a distance of t around the unit circle, you're trying to find out what is this missing distance between a complete revolution or rotation of the circle, which is 2 pi, and this distance t. So t bar is 2 pi subtract t for the reference number if you're in quadrant 4. However, if the terminal point lies in quadrants 2 or 3, the x-coordinate is negative, which means if you want to find the reference number t bar, you need to move along the unit circle to the negative x-axis, which would be the point negative 1 comma 0 on the unit circle, and that would be a half turn if we're at the point negative 1 comma 0, and a half turn of the unit circle would be t equals pi. So this distance t actually determines this reference number from pi. So t bar is pi subtract this distance t. And that will be the reference number if you're in quadrant 2. 
And again, if you're in quadrant three, the shortest distance will be to the negative x-axis. So if you trace out a distance of t along the inner circle to be in quadrant three, then the shortest distance will be this value, which is t bar or the reference number. So it is t bar is t subtract pi. So you take the distance t and then you subtract half turn and that would be this distance t bar or reference number t bar. So example five, we're gonna find reference numbers this time. Find the reference number for each of the values of t. So number one, let's say t is equal to five pi over six. Well, five pi over six, this is a positive value for t. So we're gonna go counterclockwise along the inner circle, a distance of five pi over six. That's going to give you a terminal point that's in quadrant two. If you're in quadrant two, that means that the reference number is determined by taking pi and subtracting the value for t. So that would be t bar is pi subtract t or pi subtract five pi over six. And so the reference number would be pi over six. That's this distance, pi over six, to get from five pi over six to pi, which would be the distance to the negative x-axis. Number two, let's say the value for t is seven pi divided by four. So again, t is a positive value. We'll go counterclockwise along the unit circle, but this time we'll go a distance of seven pi over four. So this will actually trace out the unit circle counterclockwise, and you'll end up at a terminal point in quadrant four this time. So since we're in quadrant four, we actually are taking the shortest distance to the positive x-axis. So if we go one entire revolution, that would be two pi. We wanna find out what is this distance that's the shortest distance to the x-axis. So we'll take t bar, which is the reference number, it's two pi, subtract this value for t. So we'll take t bar is two pi subtract t, or two pi subtract seven pi over four, and two pi is eight pi divided by four. So eight pi divided by four subtract seven pi over four, that distance to the x-axis is pi over four along the inner circle. And so that's the reference number t bar. Number three, let's say t is equal to negative two pi divided by three. So this time t is a negative value. We'll actually trace along the inner circle clockwise, starting at the point one comma zero. So if you start at one comma zero and you trace out a distance of two pi over three, but you go clockwise along the inner circle, you'll end up in quadrant three. So we wanna find out what is this distance from the terminal point to the negative x-axis. So let's find out the reference number. The terminal point is in quadrant three. If we went entire half turn around the unit circle, that would be negative pi because we're going clockwise. So t bar would be negative pi, and then we're gonna subtract off the distance for t. So negative pi subtract t would be negative pi subtract, our value for t was negative two pi over three. So t bar will be negative pi plus two pi over three, which will give us negative pi over three. And so t bar is positive pi over three because the reference number is the distance from the terminal point to the x-axis. Distance must be a positive number. And so t bar is positive pi over three. So here's the method if we wanna reverse the process and we wanna use reference numbers to find the terminal points. To find the terminal point p, determined by the real number t, we're going to use the following steps. Step one, find the reference number t bar. Step two, find the terminal point, which we'll call q, a comma b that's determined by the reference number t bar and then step three the terminal point is determined by the value for t which will be the terminal point plus or minus the x coordinate a plus or minus the y coordinate b where the signs are chosen according to the quadrant in which the terminal point lies so in other words the quadrant will determine whether we have a positive x coordinate or a negative x coordinate and a positive y coordinate or a negative y coordinate so example six we're going to use reference numbers to find the terminal points so find the terminal point determined by each of the following real numbers t. So number one, let's look at t equals five pi divided by six. So t equals five pi over six, that's a positive value for t. So we'll go counterclockwise along the inner circle starting at the point one comma zero. So if we start at one comma zero and we go a distance of five pi over six, we'll be in quadrant two. And so the reference number is the shortest distance from this terminal point to the negative x-axis. So that would be pi over six for the reference number. And so if the reference number is pi over six, that means the terminal point will be squirt three divided by two for the x coordinate and the y coordinate will be positive one half. However, since we know that we're in quadrant two, the y coordinate will be positive, but the x coordinate will be negative for the terminal point. So if t is equal to five pi over six, the terminal point should be negative squirt three over two for the x coordinate and the y coordinate is positive one half. Number two, let's say t is equal to seven pi divided by four. So we've seen this angle before. So since t is a positive value, seven pi over four, we'll go counterclockwise again, starting at the point one comma zero. So starting at one comma zero, you go a distance of seven pi over four. We'll notice that you're gonna be in quadrant four for the terminal point. And so that means that the reference number will be the shortest distance from this terminal point to the x-axis. 
Well, that distance will be pi over 4. Because 1 revolution would be 2 pi, we're going 7 pi over 4. The distance that's missing, or the shortest distance, will be pi over 4. And so the reference number is pi over 4. That means that q will be square root 2 over 2 for the x-coordinate, and the y-coordinate is square root 2 over 2. However, we're in quadrant 4. We know that quadrant 4, the x value must be positive, and the y value must be negative. So the terminal point for the value for t equals 7 pi over 4 for this reference number, it should be square root 2 over 2 for the x-coordinate, and negative square root 2 over 2 for the y-coordinate. And then number 3, let's say t is equal to negative 2 pi divided by 3. So this time the value for t is negative, so that means we're going to go clockwise along the unit circle, starting at the point 1 comma 0. So start at 1 comma 0, and you go a distance of 2 pi over 3, but this time clockwise, you end up at a terminal point that's in quadrant 3. And so this shortest distance to the negative x-axis would be pi over 3. Because if we went 1 half rotation, we know that would be negative pi. So this distance would be pi over 3. And so t bar, the reference number, is pi over 3, that distance to the negative x-axis. And so if the reference number is pi over 3, the point q should have an x value of 1 half, and the y value should be square root 3 over 2. Well, if we're in quadrant 3, we know the x value is negative, and the y value is also negative. So the terminal point for t equals negative 2 pi over 3 should be negative 1 half for the x-coordinate, and also negative square root 3 divided by 2 for the y-coordinate. Since the circumference of the unit circle is 2 pi, the terminal point determined by t is the same as determined by the value of t plus 2 pi, or t subtract 2 pi. In other words, if you go one entire revolution around the unit circle, that's 2 pi. You actually can subtract 2 pi from the value for t, or you can add 2 pi to the value for t, and it'll actually be the same terminal point. In general, you can add or subtract 2 pi any number of times without changing the terminal point determined by the value for t. So let's finish up with example 7. Example 7, we're going to find a terminal point for a very large value for t. So find the terminal point determined by the value for t, which is 29 pi divided by 6. Notice that 29 pi divided by 6 is more than one revolution or one rotation of, of the unit circle counterclockwise because the value for t is positive. So notice that you can actually rewrite t, which is 29 pi over 6, in the form of t plus 2 pi, where t determines the terminal point, notice that you have 2 pi would be 12 pi over 6, where even more than one rotation or revolution of the unit circle counterclockwise. If we actually went two revolutions, that would be 4 pi. And if we had 4 pi, what would that be in terms of if the denominator is 6? That would be 24 pi over 6. So it looks like we can rewrite 25 pi over 6 as 4 pi, which is two revolutions of the unit circle counterclockwise, and then we also have another 5 pi over 6 left over, or in addition to 4 pi. And so 4 pi is two revolutions or rotations of the unit circle counterclockwise, and then you also have 5 pi over 6. So how does this help us? Well, the terminal point for 5 pi over 6 will be the same terminal point for 29 pi divided by 6. It's just two more revolutions or rotations of the unit circle counterclockwise. So the terminal point x comma y for t equals 29 pi over 6 will be the same terminal point as t equals 5 pi over 6, which we know is negative square root 3 over 2 for the x coordinate and positive 1 half for the y coordinate. So that is the terminal point for the value for t, 29 pi divided by 6. So this finishes our video on the unit circle. We talked about how to determine whether a point is on the unit circle. We also talked about how to find terminal points given a value for a real number t. We also talked about how to find reference numbers defined by the real number t. And we also talked about how to use reference numbers to find terminal points on the unit circle. If you have any questions about any examples in this video, please let me know. Or if you have any questions while you work on the homework for this section, please let me know that as well. And I'll see you in the next video when we talk about trigonometric functions of real numbers.